Hey, it is such an honor that you guys are here today. We want to welcome all of you who are watching by the internet. If today's your first day to be with us this month, we're in a series we're calling Christmas Vacation. And the whole idea of this series has been, how many of you would like to take a vacation sometimes from your family, from the holidays, from stuff going on? The truth is, statistics tell us that a lot of people deal with a lot of hurt, a lot of depression, a lot of issues during the holiday season. That what should be on the outside, we see all the movies, we hear all the songs, it looks really good. People really put on that smile this time of year and we look good on the outside but on the inside this season really brings a lot of hurt and a lot of disappointment. So what we've been doing is just talking about how to take a Christmas vacation from all the stuff that's going on in our life and in week one we just talked about some of the things that uh, comes with the holiday season just packaged in the holidays and we just talked about what we can do to kind of counteract some of those to set ourselves up for a successful holiday season and then then last week, Pastor Brandon talked about some of the financial stress that comes with the holiday season, about how we can manage some of that, we don't fall into some of those traps, and that we can make it out alive financially this year. And today we're going to talk about the relationship side of the holidays. And if you've got your outline, I put it in your worship guide. I titled your message today, Cousin Eddie. If you've seen Christmas Vacation, you know Cousin Eddie is like the man who comes to the party and just wrecks it. That everything was in order until Cousin Eddie shows up, and he just totally wrecks the party. So our idea today is how do we contend with the people in our lives that bring us the most trouble? See, many of you have people right now that's in your family that you can already think about who these people are. You can already see their face. You can already hear their voice. You know, sometimes you can just hear their voice and it just sends chills up your spine. And then there's some people that you sit beside in your cubicle at work or you're on the job site with that you just have difficulty with that relationship. So today we're going to walk through some of those areas of how to contend with those difficult relationships. But at the top of your outline, we put a, a verse of Scripture that's kind of been our foundational verse of the month or our theme verse that we've built on and it's Luke 5 verse 15 and 16 and it says this but despite Jesus instructions the report of his power spread even faster and vast crowds came to hear him preach and to be healed of their diseases but Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer and the big idea that we want to pull out of that verse of scripture is is even Jesus himself had to get away that even the stress and the pressure and the pull of all the people, of all the circumstances, Jesus himself said, I've got to get out of here. I've got to get a peace of mind. The Bible says very early in the morning, Jesus would get up and he would go pray. He would find a place to be alone with God. The reason that Jesus did that is I don't think it was always because it was such a, a spiritual discipline all the way. Sometimes it was just I, he needed to be by himself. People were getting to Jesus as quick as they could. As soon as the day started, Jesus found himself completely bombarded by the troubles of life and not even his own. I mean, imagine being the Son of God and people always bringing their trouble to you. How many people ever just walked up to Jesus and said, Hey, how was your day? Is there anything that I can do for you? I bet Jesus didn't hear that very much. Many of you in your family or in your situation, you feel like that person where nobody walks up to you and says, How was your day? Can I do anything for you? It's always, Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Can you? Will you? I need. Can I have? Or maybe it's at work. You feel like that one person that even though everybody's in the office or on the job site, you're the one kind of in the center making making sure it's all done, and you just feel like all of these troubles and all of these pressures just begin to stack up. So we want to take that vacation away from that this year. As you go to plan for family Christmas coming up, and you got to see those people again, you know, you've got some of those in your family, and you've got to walk through those holiday rituals that you do every year, we want them to be a success this year. And I really believe that all of these moments that we come to, God's got a great purpose in it. All of the things that we do in our society, and our culture, God knows everything. See, nothing is a surprise to God. Nothing that we do is outside of God's understanding or purpose. 
So every person in your family has been appointed to you. You were given those people by God. Now some of you think they came from somewhere else. But they were given to you by God. The job that you're on, all those people that you're surrounded by, God knew you would work with them. God knew your uh, personalities may conflict with one another. God knew that everything may not go just the way you would like it to go. And God knew that there was a purpose, there's a reason, and there's a plan behind it. So today, what I want us to do is just to say, God, open us up to hear your word today so that we can see what it is maybe that you have planned for us to do in the midst of this season to reach our friends, our family, the relatives that we have, the people that we come across, even in the stores, on the streets. God, how can we? Relationship is important. It matters. So how can we make a difference in this holiday season? So let's do this. Let's just pray. And let's just ask God for every one of us. Clear our minds, clear our hearts, so that we can just receive from here today. Father... God, we love you today, and we thank you, God, for this great chance to be in your house, God. I, I'm so honored to be surrounded by so many awesome, wonderful people, Father. And we just pray today, God, that as we come together, as we sit before your word, God, and we let you speak to us, God, we just pray that you open our ears so that we can hear you speak to us this morning, God. Nothing that I would say today, God, has power to change lives, but Father, through you, your Holy Spirit speaking, God, if we can hear it, God, we can respond with life change. So God, open our minds so that we understand it, God, that we can understand what you speak to us and our hearts to be open to retain it, Father. God, not just for us, but for the people that we're surrounded by, that we can not only be hearers of your word, but we can be doers and make a difference in the lives of those who are around us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you're a fan of the Christmas Vacation movie at all, we've kind of themed our series around this movie. Um, my mom watched it for the very first time this weekend, and I thought, I cannot believe you have never seen this movie in your life. And so when I asked her the next day, I said, well, how did you, how'd you like it? What did you think of the movie? She said, that is the craziest mess I have ever sat through in my life. <laughs> that was her reaction. So she just couldn't believe all the nonsense that happened, but it's really amazing when you talk to people that will relate to all the craziness that happens with inside of that family. They'll say, you know what, I've got an uncle who's just like that, or I've got a cousin who's just like that, or one Christmas we had the Christmas tree episode, you know, where the tree explodes in the house or whatever. We can all relate to some degree of all of the stuff that's happening in the movie. So today I labeled the first section of your message. I talked about the cast of characters. Because I believe there are three different characters in this movie. There are lots more, but there are three that I focused on, kind of my favorite people of this movie. And what I want to do is I want to talk about these three different people and really who they would represent in your life and in mine. The people that we may um, encounter this holiday season who may show up to your family gathering or who may be at your work Christmas party or whatever it may be. And the three different types of people and then how we can respond to who these people are. So let's get started. Number one. Clark Griswold is the very first one I put down and the characteristic that I want to give Clark as a cast of character is unpleasable unpleasable you've met these people in your life you have them in your family don't look to anybody beside you, but you may be one this morning who is just unpleasable. If you met those people, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how well you do it. It is never good enough. Um, and I put down Clark because if you think back in the movie, he was never pleased. Nothing about Christmas or this family vacation in any of the movies with Clark was ever good enough. For example, at the movie when it first begins, they're on their hunt for the perfect family Christmas tree. They walk miles and miles in the snow, into the woods. The daughter says, I can't feel my legs anymore. And he says, it's all a part of the experience, honey. <laughs> Just keep walking. We're going to find the perfect Christmas tree. Only to realize they didn't bring a saw to chop it down. So he just says, put it on top of the car. We'll take it from the roots. Gets it home, crams it in the living room. Again, cuts the rope. The limbs explode, busts the windows of the house. It's just not, it's not practical at all. But just a simple Christmas tree from you know the local store wasn't good enough it had to be over the top it had to be huge he goes to put lights on the house and if you remember the movie he falls off the ladder he falls off the house he staples himself to the side of the house all of these things are going on it's just not good enough just to do it simple he tells his son he said we have to be the best house in the neighborhood hands him a big wad of lights and says check every single bulb go do that now you know it has to be the best never please 
And when you come across people like that in your life, even though the intentions may be good, even though they may feel like they're doing it the right way, sometimes it can just come off as overbearing or ungrateful or you try to do something really nice for somebody and they just don't receive it. It's never good enough. Uh, I was looking back at some, uh, some family videos not too long ago and it was a family Christmas. I was probably about five or six years old. And when I was a kid, you know, you like anything. You're just surprised by whatever it may be. And my parents are actually videotaping Christmas. And my brother is seven years older than I am. So he's around 12 to 13 years old. And he opens up this gift. And when he opens it, it is a basketball that he could just about hold all the way around the basketball with one hand. Now, to a 12, 13-year-old, you don't want to get like this baby's basketball so in the video he opens it and gets this this is so hurt look on his face and he looks at the basketball looks at the camera he said is this mine and my mom you can hear in the voice excitement she's like yeah don't you like it he's like just looking at it with just such just disgust at this basketball and with perfect timing I open up a gift right beside him it is the same basketball and I'm like look at this I'm like so excited about this basketball but my brother the complete opposite is so disappointed now you can understand that disappointment you know you're 13 you've got a baby's basketball but the truth is it was supposed to be what the thought that counts and that's supposed to be the way it works not in my household not with my brother it was not the thought that count it just did not matter he was unpleasable and it really wasn't an isolated event there was always something that you would go back in video to watch my brother's reaction on something because you knew right off the bat if he liked it or he did not just absolutely unpleasable and those people when you get those people in your life only cause you to most of the time just give up Because you think, if I go to all this trouble, if I make all of this effort, it's not going to matter because it's not going to please. It's not going to bless. It's not going to honor them. It's not going to be anything of great value for me to spend my time or my effort on in my life. Now, oftentimes when it's something like a small gift, a present like that, that goes away. You forget about it. But it is the deeper moments of our life when the things that matter are just not good enough. When you really try with that relationship, when you really try with that spouse, or you make that extra effort with those kids, or the people who are in your extended families, or the people that you work with, the people who make up the lives that we live every day. And when you try to do something or be something for the people around you, but rejection comes, it causes us to build walls and withdrawal. It causes you to give up on relationship, to give up on trying, to give up on making a difference for other people simply because there are people who are unpleasable. Number two, write this one down. Here's another one. Aunt Bethany is unavoidable unavoidable. I don't know if you remember Aunt Bethany in the movie, but she is one of my absolute favorites. She's one of the the older ladies. She's really famous for the scene at the table when Clark asks her to pray over the meal, and he says, will you ask Grace? And she says that Grace has been dead for 30 years. You know, he meant the blessing. You know, everything with her is just always a confusion. When she first arrives to the house, I love it because uh, Clark obviously has decorated the house like a spaceship. I mean, you know, the house is full of lights, and she walks up and she says, is the house on fire, Clark? <laughs> he says, no, Bethany, it's, it's the Christmas lights. And then the, her response is, don't push me down, Clark. <laughs> and I love it because he says, I'll try not to, Aunt Bethany. I'll try not to. Everything is a confusion with this lady. She walks in and she says, is this the airport? I mean, it's just that person in your family that's just, you love them. You really love them, but... You don't really want to spend that much time with them. You know what I mean? It's like uh, somebody saying, well, God bless you, you know, or bless your heart. You know what that really means. You know what I'm saying? If somebody says, oh, bless your heart, it's like, I feel so sorry for you, you know, or, or I would not want to be you. You know what it really, really means. You've got those people who are in your life that you just say, you know what? I would love to be your friend or family from a distance. I'm glad we're separated by time and mileage, you know. You got those people that no matter what you do, you love them, but there's just always that, that bit of insecurity within the relationship because things are just never quite right. You say it one way, but they interpret it a complete other way. See, Clark went all the trouble to decorate this beautiful house, except his family member just interprets that it's on fire, you know, that there is a problem. You try to speak blessing or love to somebody, and you try to be that good friend or whatever to whoever is in your life, 
only for them to digest it, to intercept it, all completely wrong and different. And again, it just adds strain to those relationships in your life. And many of you will know that this season that you'll go over the top to do more for people than you do throughout the year. This is a season where most people try to do more than they normally do. If it's something just thoughtful, if it's a phone call, if it's a, if it's a holiday card that you give, you will do something to try to bless somebody else. But when it's just confusion, when, when you're like this ant here, and you just feel like you just can't avoid the circumstance, then no matter how much you do, it just causes more trouble, more problem, and it's just unavoidable. You wish you could do something else so that you didn't have to work through the circumstance with this particular person. And number three, I wrote down Cousin Eddie, the king of all of them. And here's Cousin Eddie's characteristics. He's just unlikable. Absolutely unlikable. And you think that's bad to say, but Cousin Eddie, no matter what he did, no matter how good seemed to peek out every now and again of Cousin Eddie, you just couldn't like him. And we like him from afar. We like to watch the movie. But as soon as Cousin Eddie walks into your house, into your living room, into your family, that changes things quite a bit. I love it when Cousin Eddie first shows up in the movie and he says, Are you surprised, Clark? And Clark says, some of you know the quote already. I wouldn't be more surprised if I woke up in the morning with my head sewn to the carpet. (laughs) That's how surprised I would have to be. Now, the deal is, you've got these people. Now, you don't want to admit it out loud. You haven't told that person. Maybe you've told the person closest to you, maybe a spouse or maybe a really close family member, but you just don't like them. You pray when the, when the holidays roll around. The first question you ask is, Aunt Margaret coming? You know, you want to know, are they going to be there? So that you can brace yourself for another bad holiday. And maybe you begin saying, well, you know how they acted last year. You know what they said. You know what they did. You know how they ruined the whole family gathering. You know, they always are asking for something. You know, Cousin Eddie, he always wanted something. You know, Clark, I've got a list for you. We talked about that in week one. He brings all of these needs to you, and it just doesn't sink in that he's the oddball out of everybody. Now, you can all think of who that person is in your life. You've got people who are just unavoidable. They're unlikable, and they're unpleasable. Now, what do we do with them? How do we respond to them? To be honest with you, the enemy, the devil, who is real and who is active, who wants to take our lives and put them into chaos, to put them into confusion. You see, the enemy, one of the greatest tools he has is chaos and confusion. If he can take our emotions in the midst of a circumstance... Now, we talked about in week one that everything is magnified in the holiday season. Our hurt, our troubles, everything is magnified. If the enemy can take those areas of our life during this season and magnify all the hurt, magnify all the confusion, magnify all the pressure, if he can make these things larger than life, it will create hurt, confusion, it grabs your heart, it grabs your emotions, and suddenly you feel bad about yourself, you feel depressed about life circumstances, you become overly angry and confused and frustrated with all the people in your life. And here's what the enemy will make you do. The enemy will make you pull yourself away from every blessing that God wants to give to you. And the big idea here is that God has a reason behind everything that happens. I told you already, nothing is a surprise to God. This stuff in our family, these people in our lives, it's not a surprise to God. And God's got a reason behind it all. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to flip your outline over and I want to go into what I'm calling outside the season. Now, outside for the season, because Clark Griswold, in his quote, after all the family arrived, here's what Clark said. He said, I'm going to park the cars and get the luggage, and well, I'll be outside for the season. That was his response to all of the family showing up because he knew what was about to unfold. He knew that uh, the in-laws were in town. He knew that the parents were staying. He knew what was to come. And he just said, I'm checking out. I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be out for the season. Now, he wanted to check out and run away, but here's what I want you to do. I want this check out, this I'm out for the season. I want us to take that step back from everything going on this morning. And I want to take the perspective of if I step back and I can see this as a whole, this season that's coming, the opportunity that's in front of me with all of my family, with all of these relationships, and say, God, what do you want me to do with it? How do I respond to it? 
what would be the proper response for what you want to accomplish in my life during this holiday season? Because after all, God, this is all centered around you. This whole season is centered around you to begin with. We take this time of year and we set it aside to make a difference and to celebrate, to honor what God did by sending his son into the world. So number one on your outline, write this down. Here's the first thing that you need to do to survive these people in your life this holiday is you need to have a plan. Have a plan. Now the Bible says in Proverbs 21 and 31, it says, The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. Now I love that verse of scripture, particularly in the context of this scenario, because it says the horse is prepared for battle. Meaning that the principle there is, is that we do all we can to prepare for the task that is at hand. I just love it because it says the horse is prepared for battle. Many of us feel like the holiday season is walking into a battle. When you watch that movie and you see all the chaos going on, it's like a war zone, just a battlefield. Many of you honestly feel that way with the people who are in your life. You feel like you're walking into a battlefield. It may be every day when you go to work. It may be the people who are the closest around you, but it's always conflict. You need to have a plan as you approach that this year because here's what happens. If you don't have some sort of plan before you face all this, it's just going to be like every other year. It's going to be like every other relationship encounter that is difficult. You either get run over, you get your feelings hurt, you feel worse about your situation than you did before, you just feel like the relationships will never be mended, you feel like the hurt will just always be there, you just feel like that you just have to accept it the way it is. And the reason is, is because you're not being proactive to do something to change the circumstance or the situation. Now, Romans 12 and 21 says, Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Now, if you're going to do something, it means you need to know what it is that you're going to do. Now, I'm not calling the relationships in your life evil, but I'm saying the difficulty and the trouble, strife that is there, if you don't have a plan on what you're going to do with it, it will collapse on top of you. All of these weights and all of these stresses that you just take, unless you do something with it, it will overtake you. It will collapse you. You can't do it. You can't carry it all on your own. Now, I've got a couple of things that are just practical that maybe you want to write down on your notes. I didn't put it in your outline, but I think they're important to share. Just some ideas that I'll give you. Number one, here's one of the first things I think you can do is I think you need to check your attitude. Start with you. Just check your attitude. Check your attitude. What am I feeling about this already? Now, as the time comes and we get closer, the holidays are approaching, you, your, your attitude automatically becomes an issue. It changes. And it changes. Maybe it's legitimate. Maybe you have a reason to feel that way. Maybe the trouble is, is legitimized. But the problem is you're already in a, in, a, in a messed up mood before you ever get to the people. You ever been that way? You just know that you're going to see somebody. You know how it's going to go. So you're mad when you get there. You're frustrated. Your stomach is in knots. You're all twisted and, and turned because you already know what's going to come. But if you can change your attitude, then when you walk into it, it's a little different from the start. And the way that you can change your attitude is you need to get as much Jesus inside of you so that there is more Jesus that comes out of you, okay? Because what's in us just naturally does not need to come out, okay? You're only going to heighten the trouble in all of your relationships at Christmas. You're going to cause a scene, you're going to say something, and it's going to be that Christmas to remember of 2013 for the very wrong reason. Because you've stored up all of this resentment, all of this anger, and all of this hurt, and eventually, once you're full, it's going to overflow. So out of all of these years, all of these seasons, all of these holidays, all of these weeks, all of this time that you've stored up this stuff, eventually it is going to come out. Somebody's going to say something the wrong way, look at you the wrong way, do something the wrong way, and it's going to come out. But when you put enough Jesus inside of you to flush all of you out, Jesus will come out. Grace, mercy, patience, love, joy, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. All of these things that God gives to us will take place of me. And the only way that you can truly change your attitude is to put on the mind of Christ. To let him take control of all of this. And you do that through the word of God. Listen, 
when you say things sometimes, you ever said something and say, I don't even know where that come from. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said it. Well, you said it because that's what you had stored up on the inside. But when you take God's word and you store that up, suddenly, where you would have said something that you, you didn't need the kids to hear, suddenly you're saying something good out of God's word that changes the whole scenario because you filled yourself up with it. And it changes your attitude. It will change everything. Much prayer. How did Jesus handle all of these crowds and all these pressures? He prayed a lot. He spent a lot of time with God. He got away from it all. He took a break. He stepped back. He got alone with God. And he prayed. Another little thing I wrote down that you could change to have a plan is to check your outlook. Check your outlook. So when you check your attitude and you get yourself aligned the right way, then your outlook is different. See, when things change on the inside, then things begin to change on the outside. And when you feel different, when your attitude is different, you look at things differently. If you look at things with a depressed vision, if you look at things with a defeated vision, you're going to see everything that way. Everything you look at, you're going to see defeat. Everything you look at, you're going to see something that you can't overcome. You're going to just going to give up because that's what you see. But when your attitude is different, your outlook will be different. You need to have a plan to walk into all of these relationships. Have a plan together that you're going to get yourself in control. You can't change other people. You can't swap out your family. You, know, you can't substitute your family. You have been given what you've been given. You have what you have. There is no going back. It's been given to you. But you can change you. Now, number two, write this one down. I think this is important as well. This will empower some people. Is You need to have a boundary. Have a boundary. Now, that almost seems negative. It almost seems like, okay, if I have a boundary in my life, I'm going to do somebody wrong or I'm going to limit myself. Boundaries are not to limit you. Boundaries are not for your limitation. Boundaries are for your protection. Boundaries don't limit you to the things that you can do or the relationships that you have, how good they can be or how quality the relationships are. That's not what boundaries do, but boundaries protect you. They protect your feelings, your emotions. They protect your time. They protect your investments into the people who are around you. You know where you can sow your time and your energy and your resources into good places because you have boundaries to protect you. Now, many of you have been mistreated by people in your life, by coworkers, family, all of these people that you have in your life, these difficult relationships. And oftentimes, you can look in the middle of those circumstances and you can see no boundary lines for the people who are in your life. They've just got freedom, complete freedom to come in and to say and to do and to treat anything they want to do in your life. You have no boundary lines for these people. Listen to what the Bible says. Matthew 16 and 23 says this. Jesus turned to Peter. Now, Peter was one of the 12 disciples. The disciples were people who Jesus hand-picked. 12 men who Jesus hand-picked to mentor to train, to lead, the beginning of what God has done in the church and to bring in Christ into our lives. Jesus handpicked Peter, very close friend of Jesus himself. And Jesus says to him and says, Get away from me, Satan. It's a strong statement. You are a dangerous trap to me. You're seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. That's a strong statement. But here's what was happening. Peter was compromising the plan of God. Jesus was letting them know that he would go to a cross. He would give his life so that we could have a relationship with God. And Peter is saying, oh no God, because he doesn't understand. But he is in the way. He is creating division from the plan of God. And Jesus just simply says, we are not going to allow that to happen. You are deviating from the very plan of God and we are going to have to separate on this issue. See, the Bible talks about forgiveness and grace and to do everything that we can do with all the power and ability we have to make peace with every person in our life. However, it does not mean that you have to just be a punching bag. It doesn't mean that you have to just be a stepping stool for people to mistreat you. 
Being godly doesn't mean that you can't have boundary lines with people. Jesus just told him, said, get back, don't come to me. Now, in Acts 15, you can read where, where two of the apostles, the very beginning of the church, people who planted church, who had such a, a, a disagreement that they parted ways. They still love God. They still love one another. They just couldn't see eye to eye on an issue. So they parted ways. They created some boundary lines so that they could still do what God had called them to do. They just didn't do it together because they needed boundaries in their life. Now, I would say this. Some of you guys need to just create some boundaries in some of the people that are in your life. If you are a note taker, maybe write a couple of these down. I didn't put them in your outline. They're just extra notes for you. If you're going to create boundaries with people, just speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. You can tell them the issues. You can, you can let them know your heart, but speak it in love. You don't have to do it out of anger. You don't have to make it a big production and make this a family feud. You just need to speak the truth how you feel. You'll be surprised at just let it, getting it off your chest how much that will free you alone. Number two is maybe you need to guard your words. Be careful in what you say and how you say it. Guard what you say. You don't have to say everything. There's those little jabs that you would like to take. You don't have to take those. You can take the high road. It'll help you. Don't gossip about the people of your difficulty. Don't go to everybody. Don't tear everybody down. It just, it just creates more confusion and more problem. And these boundary lines, just do it the right way. And number four, I wrote this one down, is just accept your differences. Just accept differences. You may be different than the people in your family. You may live totally different, believe totally different. But just accept differences. Do all that you can do to have peace with all of these people in your life, but, but don't feel like you have to just be walked over or mistreated. You can set boundaries in your life. And the last one, number three, I think this is important, is you need to have a purpose. Have a purpose. Now, we say at Cultivate Church that we live life on purpose. That everything behind what we do, we want to we fall in love with Jesus, realize the purpose that God has for our life, and then we want to go live it out and make a difference for everybody else. Our church, we, we want to live our lives for other people. We want to be generous people, a generous church, and we want to give ourselves away for anything that Jesus could possibly use us for. Now, in the context of this season and your family and the people that you have surrounded by you, the difficulties this season... Now, I understand some of these, this sounds far-fetched. I know what some of you are saying, but Pastor Brandon, you don't know. You have not met this person. All of this sounds good, but you haven't met this person. Well, again, there's a purpose in it. There's a reason behind it. Listen to this verse, Acts 1 and 8 says this. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Now, some of these relationships, without the power of the Holy Spirit helping you, you'll never make it through. So God gives us the Holy Spirit to help us, and you will be my witnesses, us, all of us, will be his witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, all three of those, and see, Jerusalem represents our city. Judea, Samaria, that, that represents our nation. And him, when he says to the other ends of, of the earth, it means our world. It means everything around us. It means Jesus has given us the responsibility to reach literally everything. Now, I know everybody has different gifts, different heartbeats. Some people have a heartbeat for, for Shelby County and only Shelby County. That's your God-given heartbeat. Some of you, you feel like you can't see here because all you can see is the other side of the world. Maybe that's the God-given heartbeat that he's given to you. But one thing here is he says, for Jerusalem, that's my city. That's the, that's the world that God has given to me. It's the family that I'm going to see this holiday season. It's the people that God has surrounded me by at the workplace. It's the place where I shop. It's the community that I live. It is the immediate world that I live in, that I can affect every day. That's my Jerusalem. Now, God has given us the responsibility to go and to share Christ. Now, I understand this holiday season, you're not going to walk into that family gathering. Most of you are not going to go to work tomorrow morning and, and have a, 
uh, a message prepared to give and say, well, I need everybody to gather around. We're going we're gonna to open up the Bible and here's what God says to you. You're not going to do that. But you know what you are going to do? You're going to give a message and not even know it because you're going to live out the life of Jesus. You're going to speak. You're going to act. You're going to do. And every single bit of that carries the representation, the character, the person of Christ wherever you are. And the reason is, is because Jesus laid that responsibility on us. So when you walk into those relationships this season, there's a purpose laid behind it. Maybe it's a word that you speak to that family member. Maybe it's a little bit of peace or some reassurance that you could be praying for those people. Maybe you could say something simple like, hey, I'll pray for that. You know, you've got that, that person that, that just you, unavoidable, they're always going to give their problems and it's always how bad it is again this year. Maybe, just maybe, instead of being so overwhelmed and disgusted with it, maybe if you have your plan and you have yourself together to say, you know what, this year I'm going to respond with, I'm going to pray for you and believe God's best for your life. Maybe you have a scripture ready that is going to be your go-to scripture of the weekend. No matter what they say, you've got a good encouraging scripture from God's word, a truth that they could stand on if they'll grab it and put it in their heart. The truth is God's got a plan this season for every relationship in your life. So this year, let it be different. If you get yourself together, you get yourself a plan, and then realize that there is a purpose behind it, God can use you and God can do great things through you. You can be the miracle working difference in the difficult relationships of your life. Now, here's what I want to do. I just want to pray for us this morning. And I want to pray God's best on us. I want to pray that God lets the Holy Spirit just empower and change our hearts, our minds, so that we can begin to pray for whatever God would have us to accomplish in all of these difficult relationships this holiday season. So here's what I want you to do. I want you just to bow your head, close your eyes where you are. If you're a guest at Cultivate, we're not going to make you move or do anything like that. But I can tell you this this morning, that all of the ability that God gives, it comes completely and totally out of a relationship, a committed relationship to Jesus. I can tell you that today, without Jesus in our life, nothing is possible. Everything that I would do would be completely and totally on my own. And by myself, on my own, it doesn't work. Because I do not have what it takes I don't have the ability. But because of Jesus and the Holy Spirit working in my life, I can make it every day. May not always be as good as I want to be, but I know that the Holy Spirit is helping me to do the best that I can. And today, maybe somebody's here and say, you know what, Pastor Brennan, I don't have that help. I don't have Jesus in my life to, to lean on, to help guide me, to help walk me through some of these difficult circumstances circumstances or situations and maybe today you just like to say hey Pastor Brandon I want this to be my day I want to give my heart to Jesus I just want to start this this journey with Christ you may not have all the answers you may not have it all figured out that's completely okay you're in the best place you could possibly be because the more questions you ask God the more answers he can give so here's what I want to do just where you are if that's you you feel that way and you say man I want to start my relationship with Jesus today I'm not going to ask you to move or stand up but I would like you just to throw your hand up at me just real quick so I can see you thank you I see yours if that's you and you say man today I'm going to give my heart to Jesus just throw that hand up just let me know who I'm praying for awesome awesome online wherever you are just respond don't let a distraction get you where you are right now. Just respond to what Jesus is speaking to you. I'm going to pray for those who responded this morning. And then I'm going to pray a blessing on top of us that God would help us. Now if you responded to say, man, I want to give my heart to Jesus and you don't know what to say, just pray what I pray or just talk to God. Just commit yourself to Him. Jesus, this morning we love you. We thank you for your, your love for us. Thank you that you died for me, Jesus. That you made a way for me to have a relationship with you. I just ask you to forgive me. Today, I make you number one in my life. Today, I give you everything. I want to start my journey today fresh and new with you. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you, God, for a brand new life. Thank you for the opportunity to have a life with you. And Father, for every person in this room that would just say, 
God, we need your power. We need your strength. We need your ability. God, I pray that this holiday season we would see purpose like never before to make a difference in the lives of the people who are the closest to us. God, we just pray for that strength, that ability. God, let this be a season like never before. 